Well, we're talking with Ryan Villapoto, who's going to be riding in the Monster Energy Cup tomorrow out at Sam Boyd Stadium. 30,000 people expect it. Hey, Villapoto, how's it going, how buddy? Go, Ryan? Now, how do you stay focused? What's the worst injury you've ever had? Each year, the best riders on the planet assemble to fight for the Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship. Their 17-round saga will take place over five months in stadiums across North America. Amidst the most competitive fields in the history of the sport, Ryan Villapoto has won two straight Supercross championships. But the task of moving forward bears the weight of all that success has extracted from his life. Do I love it? Yeah, I, I do love it. But this isn't everything to me. I'll walk tomorrow. I'll walk away. I was on him a lot, pretty hard on him. <laughs> I gotta get a drink. What do you think of Twitter? How do you train? And now that you're a top dog, do you feel more pressure? So what do you think is the biggest misconception of your sport? In attempting to acquire a third straight Supercross title in 2013, Villapoto is chasing a feat only previously accomplished by Ricky Carmichael, Bob Hanna, and seven-time champion Jeremy McGrath. But it is a goal that comes secondary to the hope of reuniting his family. You look at basketball players, all the movie artists, every single person you think of fires their mom or their dad as their manager. I might have hugged him a lot more and said, you know, I love you. After 20 years of racing, each task begins with the thoughts of all that can and has gone wrong. Villapoto went down, cartwheeled, a big end over end. There is nothing Ryan can do today that will guarantee success. Tomorrow will be the same. Confidence only comes from daily excellence amidst the grind. If anybody was to say that he's not the right guy or a good ambassador for the sport, then doesn't understand a champion. How can you be a better example than to get knocked down, get back up, and win again? Dan and Chris Villapoto brought home their first child, Ryan, in the summer of 1988. Their first home was located in the town of Paul's Bowl, Washington. Known for its harbors, Scandinavian influences, and high amounts of precipitation, it seems an unlikely origin for a Supercross champion. The town was chosen for its beauty by Dan's father while traveling through the Puget Sound as the captain of an Alaskan fishing vessel. It was just the way of life that we got brought up into it. My dad raced, my uncle raced, my grandpa still rides. Motocross families in general are probably closer than most because you're like together 24 hours a day, sleeping at the track and I mean, it's fun. You know, it took a few years, three years for him to get going fast, but I knew from the very get-go as him racing 60s, all right, well, he's going to be a professional. Unknown to most parents at the beginning, the journey of taking a kid with racing potential to the pros will cost them more than $500,000 and years on the road. For the Villapotos, these costs were paid while constantly losing to Ryan's childhood rival, Mike Alessi. Ryan Villapoto was an amateur racer, never won a race when they raced against us. Never. That creates a lot of hard feelings and animosity. Ryan chasing Mike, he knew Mike was faster than him. Mike beat him straight up most of the time. It just made Ryan be pushed that much harder. I'd tell Ryan all the time, try harder, put more effort into it. It never ended. It was just a grind. As Ryan showed more potential, he began to receive racing support, first from Yamaha, then from Kawasaki. But with financial support comes the expectation that the rider will perform at races all over the country, like Loretta Lynn's and Ponca City. Two weeks before we went to Ponca, my dad had got diagnosed with cancer, and he was really into Ryan's racing. I said, we're going on the road to Ponca and Loretta, Dad, and I'll come back and get you, and then I'll take you home. We were sitting in line at Ponca when my dad died. Adding to the obstacles of their amateur racing program, Dan Villapoto's kidneys began to fail during Ryan's ADCC racing career. Refusing to put the racing schedule on hold, 
the waste that his kidneys normally filtered from his blood grew to a deadly level. The doctor says, if you don't go get this done and get on dialysis, you're gonna die in a week. That's what they said. So he said, I need a list of all the dialysis centers because I'm going. He said he would rather die than quit. And I remember having to schedule dialysis every two days on the road from here to Tennessee to Oklahoma. I told Ryan a couple times, I said, hey, let's quit this. Buy a ski boat. Do something else, you know. And you just keep saying, no, I'm gonna, I'm racing. I said, okay, let's go. Let's get it done. Well, I've never really seen my dad cry. The only time I've seen him cry is when something with Ryan happens. People can sit and judge and say my parents are irresponsible about putting all their efforts in a kid in a dirt bike, but my parents knew if Ryan didn't make it, what else would Ryan do? Not to be mean to my brothers or anything, but they just never liked school and they barely got through grade school. I feel like it's the greatest gift that my parents could have gave my brothers is to back what they wanted to do. Make sure your approach is right, that you're, you're pumped to have these because these are tough for you. The more you push away and you hate that, you're tinkering. So embrace the conditions because that's the only way you adapt to it. While training, Jake Weimer must walk the border between hope and despair. He, Ryan Villapoto, and their trainer Alden Baker are preparing for the 2013 Supercross season on Villapoto's property in Florida. Ryan Villapoto has done it! Victory goes to Ryan Villapoto! Villapoto has won the last two Supercross championships. On average, rides a Supercross track one to two seconds faster than Weimer and is the main focus of Baker's attention. We're doing this interview right now because of Ryan. It's for Ryan's show, right? If it bothers me that bad, I need to go win. Ryan motivates himself out of how much he can stomp his foot down. I have the number one plate, I own everyone. And then Jake, you know, what are his options? Could you go back to California and be on your own? Or accept the challenge, embrace that almighty thing that you have weighing on you in a way. The shadow where Jake Weimer currently spends his nine to five workout sessions is the place where Villapoto's younger brother, Tyler, lived for the first 17 years of his life. Plagued by injuries for much of his career, Tyler is currently trying to race his way to Supercross in 2014 by racing Amsoil Arena Cross this year. Pushing, I mean, some people might call it abuse. They're pushed, the kid's not gonna make it unless they're pushed. Ryan was somebody that could take it. You push Tyler and he shut down pushed his bike up against the trailer, I'm done, I'm not riding. I honestly didn't feel like I had the backing that I needed. You see all the attention that your brother's getting and the support from your parents. I rebelled and resented it and turned my back myself and tried to run the other way and do it myself, but as a kid, that's not gonna work. Amateur riders can turn pro at 16, and as Ryan neared that age, his parents had spent so much money that a professional contract was a financial necessity, increasing the attention, resources and pressure towards Ryan. I was a spec builder and I ended up building a house. It took three and a half years to build it. And then when we didn't have no money, I just sold the whole house for $350,000 and spent all that money going racing. There's a point in time where we're all in or we're quitting. All in means he stops building houses and we go racing. So if I didn't do something or I didn't want to ride, my dad would tell me to get back out there and, you know, keep riding. Everybody sacrificed. I mean, earlier we were talking and you said, I, I didn't even know Ryan had a little sister. She kind of got drug around. She missed out on things she wanted to do. Ride horses, gymnastics, and it was like, you can't do this because we're going to the races. Pretty much any kid that has made it, his parents were broke because all the rich kids, they don't make it because they're just not tough enough. You don't do good at Loretta's and you're on your way home, you're bummed. 
but Pops has to drive 25 hours and he's really bummed. He's still swiping the card to get you home. You suck, son. Let me $100 to fill the motorhome up again. After losing to Michael Lessie for nearly all of his amateur career, the sacrifices of the Villapoto family finally paid off when Ryan won his first Loretta Lynn's amateur championship in 2005 and signed a contract with the most dominant race team in the 250 class, Pro Circuit. The 250 class is where professional riders must prove themselves before moving up to the larger 450 machine. Okay, bud, rip their heads off. Pro Circuit team owner Mitch Payton managed the two greatest Supercross champions in the history of the sport, Ricky Carmichael and Jeremy McGrath. Villapoto's time with Payton would revolutionize his career. Here comes Ryan Villapoto, he got it! The Monster Energy Kawasaki ride has just jumped into the number one ride. The transition from little bikes to big bikes really was a turning point. The first time the public got to see future greatness. He won a championship and then won another one and another one. During Ryan's rookie season in 2006, he finished third overall in Supercross and won an outdoor national championship. No rider in history has matched the success that Ryan achieved in 2007. He won the West Coast 250 Supercross Championship, the Outdoor National Championship, and the overall victory at the Motocross of Nations. Can you imagine being on a 250F against the best in the world of 250s and 450s, and then you whole shot both motos and then you lead every single lap both motos like that kid killed it phenomenal i'm saying it might not ever happen again it's a perfect recipe for disaster making six figures well then about 17 what's that mean Ooh, girls right then you're in southern california Ooh, yeah junior you don't want to live with mom and dad anymore I don't know that I've really met an 18-year-old. Do you want to live at home right now? No. That wouldn't matter if the parents were loaded, but they're not. You done spent everything you had, and there's other siblings. It's a recipe for disaster. The older you get, the contracts, the money, does it get harder with family? Yeah, it does. You have all those people that come up to you and say, oh, I wish I had your life. Or, I wish I was in your shoes. Well, it's not as glamorous and easy as it looks, that's for sure. For Supercross racers, maturity is forced at an early age. At 16, 17, and 18 years old, Ryan Villapoto was the primary source of income for his family. Ryan Villapoto wins another one! Two years into racing for Mitch Payton in the 250 class, Villapoto claimed three championships and was widely regarded as one of the best racers in the world. Years earlier, his father Dan had liquidated his Washington-based construction business for the sake of Ryan's amateur career and had relocated the family to Southern California. You're able to turn pro at 16. And if you sign a deal for 200 grand, you're 16, but you actually become 21. Just like that. That's basically the way that the parents have to start looking at it. Well, you're doing this for media. You're doing this. You have to go here. You have to fly there. Now it's a job. It's real. You're supposed to do that and then not do these other things. Go to parties, you know, what, whatever it is. And you're supposed to not do that, but you, but you have to fulfill all those other obligations. I mean, we started butting heads then. Mainly at that time, it was with my mom. Were we strict? Yeah. But I think he wouldn't be where he's at unless that strictness was there. Would I do some things different? I might have not been any less strict, but I might have hugged him a lot more and said, you know, I love you. You don't think you did that enough? You did it. Yeah, I did it, but just let him know that, you know, I don't know. I remember there was one really big fight, and it was the first time I've ever seen Ryan cry. And my cousin looked at me and said, you guys are moving. He said he wanted Kylie to not grow up being a track girl. He wanted her to go to school and have 
her own life, not the track to be her life, and I understand that. I guess I'm a little bitter. Not necessarily mad that I had to move. I'm more mad that our relationship disintegrated when I had to move. That's more what I'm bitter about. And it was to the point where I couldn't watch my brother's races on the TV. Following the departure of his mother and sister to the family home in Washington, Dan remained in California for two years, serving as Ryan's practice bike mechanic. In that time, Ryan won a fourth championship in the 250 class and suffered a harsh transition to the 450 class in 2009. His fitness wasn't the best fitness. I don't think it's a secret. Down goes Villapoto. Well, that dropped Villapoto down to 12. The year included a three-race absence due to mono and five races in which he finished outside the top five. Villapoto currently running at 14. On top of his fitness, Villapoto struggled to understand and apply the new language of suspension settings necessary to handle the increased power of his 450 machine. He didn't know a lot about setting up a bike and how important it was. You gotta respect the thing a lot more. He had one of his first big crashes was in the whoops. He grabbed the handful and it threw him down hard and it scared him. When Ryan returned from his bout with Mono, he redeemed himself by winning two out of the last three races of the season. But conflict with his father regarding his growing number of influences and desire to take control of his finances had reached a tipping point. Bobby Nichols, Ryan's agent of several years, would address any of Ryan's financial concerns. And Ryan had been in a relationship with his now wife, Kristen, for three years. In the industry, the people, well, that's your money, and mom and dad, you're out. They don't owe you a dime. And I've heard that. It's not that they owe you, but why can't you benefit from the success that you both had? If you look at your kid and say, okay, we're partners in this thing, he's automatically gonna turn around and say, well, you ain't out there riding and risking your life. And the easiest person to blame is the only person that was never around before, which was me. If he asked how much money to my savings account, they immediately thought it was the girl that told him to ask. He was gonna be that way with any female. So it's not like it's just, you know, her. I was an outsider who's now become an insider, and now I'm gonna start doing things for their son that they've done their whole life. To have Ryan put his faith in me is probably an incredibly hard pill to swallow. It's kind of weird that now that my kid's successful, my business is gone. If I had a successful construction company and I brought my son in, you're gonna be my partner, your vice president. Here's the salary, and then I'll teach you how to do this, and this will be your business. What would be the difference? You know, I always felt like, man, if you would just sit back, then I'll just write you a check. Here comes Bill Spano! Bill Spano wins! A stunning race! Everybody is in Ryan's ear telling him what to do, you know, and it's like, Ryan's trying to grow up. He wants to be independent. He wants to learn what it is to control these things. It was bad and it was miserable. Absolutely demolishes Ryan Villapoto, pushes him off the track. I think it's just the minds get clouded, then get scared because there is nothing else to fall back on. Everything they did build business-wise is gone. The only thing to lean on is us. The money, the fame. It's the root of all evil. Yeah, it was hard. I, I was at Glen Helen riding and uh, just told him, like, kind of in between riding or right, right after I was done, you know, like, hey, we're gonna, you're gonna go home and I'll still pay you, but you're gonna, you're gonna go home and I'm gonna do it on my own. It was pretty tough, pretty hard to swallow. trying to fight his way through. After finishing sixth overall in the 2009 Supercross season, Ryan Villapoto's physical condition was further exposed when he tore his ACL two weeks into the summer. Between 2008 and 2010, Villapoto went through three trainers and parted ways with his mother and father, who had provided much of the daily structure throughout his amateur career. Kristen, Ryan's current wife and girlfriend at the time, 
was awarded the task of reinstating a successful daily routine. When we first met, they all seemed to have a pretty good relationship. Once I came around and then that all kind of tore apart, I kind of felt responsible. And I, I mean, to this day, I kind of still do feel responsible. I just started doing everything I could at that point for Ryan making sure that everything in the house was cleaned up. Every flight was booked. If his trainer said he can only eat fish every day, it's gotta be prepared this way, you better believe I'm doing that. If I have to get on the bike with him, I'm gonna go, or at least I'm gonna push him out the door. In the 2010 Supercross season, Villapoto lost to incoming rookie Ryan Dungey the opening three rounds. But after charging past Josh Hill and Dungey at round four in San Francisco, Villapoto won six out of the next eight races and closed within 11 points of Dungey's championship lead. Ryan Villapoto lights and camels and takes a win! He just reeled them off one after another and he was leading start to finish. Then we get to St. Louis and Dungey had the whole shot and Ryan was riding great. Villapoto's charging! The two is coming after him! These two title heavyweights know it's mano a mano! Ryan knew he needed to get by him and he tried to make an aggressive move. Hell, yeah, Villapoto runs him in home by and takes him down! The two leaders go down! Villapoto's your leader! Dungy, if I was him inside that helmet, I would be so fired up right now. I would focus and I would dig as deep as I can. Oh! Villapoto tosses it away! Villapoto is down hard! It was almost like watching a dream, like it was in slow motion. The bike flipping through the air. I mean, you don't see crashes like that very often. He just was holding his leg, and we knew it wasn't good. Villapoto broke his tibia and fibula in the crash and would have to be flown to Seattle so a specialist could reconstruct his ankle with five plates and 47 screws. The six-month recovery process would be the most difficult period of Villapoto's career. Him laying in that hospital bed for so long, he withered away, trying to stay off the painkillers so that he didn't get addicted to that. The pain and how long it took and the therapy he had to go through. I mean, you'd question if he was even ever gonna wanna ride a bike again. The power that our bikes are making, the speeds that we're going, the difficulty of the tracks, the things that can go wrong. The only thing that goes through my head is injury. Actually getting hurt, you know, badly. Racing Supercross. You have to stay sharp. You can't not be on the bike. So your risk factor is at an all-time high all the time. A great opportunity showed up. Ryan calls me. He says, hey, Eldon's not working with James no more, and I can work with him. What do you think? I had worked with Eldon with James, and I said, it's a no-brainer. He's the best guy in the sport, and he's proven. Did it with Ricky, did it with James. If you have this opportunity, you need to jump on it now before someone else does. When Ryan approached me, I was actually worried. I didn't think he had the physical capabilities anymore to do the job right. I took him to a specialist that actually looked him over and ran tests to see if that foot was going to be enough motion, enough feel. The body forgets pain. I forgot by the time I was able to start walking and, all right, well, when can I ride type of deal. There's a trust factor too that he has to trust me. At first, he was a little like, I, you know, I don't know. I, re I really don't know. I looked him in the eyes and I said, I think we can be ready. And that's probably the only time you could see he actually believed. Villapoto and Baker began training together just three months before the start of the 2011 Supercross season. Ryan Dungey came into 2011, fresh off a Supercross title, outdoor title, and Motocross of Nations victory. Chad Reed came into the year on a team built around himself, and James Stewart was out to prove that he could beat his former trainer. Going into Anaheim, 2011, no one expected anything after Ryan broke his leg so bad. Everyone was saying, nah, he's done, he's career ending, his competitors saying it. There's a pass for the lead! From round one to round 10 in Indianapolis, Villapoto was the most dominant rider in the series, winning five races. Checkered bike falls for Ryan Villapoto! 
but his 26-point lead in the championship would shrink dramatically by round 16 in Salt Lake City, leaving Chad Reed, Ryan Dungey, and James Stewart all with a shot at the title. We went to Salt Lake. Ryan, he was kind of in a weird mood that day, and my temper was getting short. I got on him and said, this is it. If you're going to be a champion, you need to make this happen. Ryan Villapoto has just set the fastest lap of the main event. So Villapoto now finally is coming to life here. Reed makes a mistake. Villapoto oh, goes that opens the door. Up Stewart's the down. Stewart is down. There goes Villapoto. Villapoto to the checkered flag. He lights the candles and extends his points lead. Confidence went back up again. Going into Vegas, he had a cushion, brought the championship home. Villapoto's first Supercross championship propelled him to arguably the most successful year ever experienced by a Supercross racer. In the following months, Villapoto won the Outdoor National Championship, led Team USA to a Motocross of Nations victory, and completed a three-race sweep at the inaugural Monster Energy Cup. And Ryan Villapoto has done it, and he's a millionaire after just one race. His million-dollar reward was the largest prize for a single race in the history of the sport. It's a, a lot of work, there's a lot of risk involved. When I win, everybody that's in my group wins, from my mechanic to my wife to my trainer. It takes work from all of us, and when we do win, there's nothing better. While 2011 was the most successful year of Villapoto's career, he was still estranged from his family. His parents, brother, and sister merely watched from the outside. Over two hard years of... Yeah, it was pretty nasty. I mean, I mean a bitterness. you were hurt, right? I mean, oh, totally. Of crying, me crying every day. It was pretty bad. I miss my kid. It would make my life easier if I were just the best guy and I won every time. You just go through your life and it'd be relatively easy. You wouldn't second guess or think about really anything. But to know that you have to show up every weekend ready to race and not only race, but it's gonna be a brawl. Other guys are gonna be right there, Chad or Ryan. That wears on you. In 2011, Ryan Villapoto won every championship he entered. As the 2012 season opener at Anaheim approached, a second straight Supercross championship was the expectation. The bike was better, he was better, and we were just building. 2011 was coming off that injury. He was able to win everything, so we went into Anaheim and came out winning. Whole shot go to the number one, Ryan Villapoto, and he's making a big, huge statement here tonight. Following his victory at Anaheim, Ryan Dungey, James Stewart, and Chad Reed each found the top step of the podium at the next three rounds. Never before in the history of Supercross had four former champions won consecutive races to start the season. The speeds kept going up and up and up because these guys were just pushing each other to the limit. Dallas, when Chad was riding right on Ryan's rear wheel, Ryan had told me he was going as hard as he could, but he said if they both rode that pace, someone was going to go down, so he was just about to let him by. The crash at Dallas would end Reed's season with a torn ACL. It was the continuation of a season marred by injuries. At Los Angeles, Trey Kennard had been eliminated from the title hunt with a broken back. Ryan Dungey would break his collarbone at practice, and James Stewart would suffer a series of crashes and injuries throughout the season. And this championship takes another twist, and there goes Stewart again! With eight victories, Villapoto wrapped up his second consecutive Supercross title at round 13 in Houston. Never had a rider clinch the championship so early in the 40-year history of the sport. It was a huge thing for Ryan to do. The last time someone won back-to-back -back titles was Ricky Carmichael. Two rounds after clinching the title, the series moved to Villapoto's hometown, Seattle. But the main event would see the end of the most dominant stretch of Ryan's career. The first time carrying the number one plate in front of his hometown crowd, and he is crawling off the track. Washed the front end out, but his leg was already stuck to the ground, so his leg stayed one way and the front tire went that way. That angle just popped his knee out. 
Ryan's second ACL replacement would be his third major surgery in four years. Training is the only effective injury prevention method in Supercross, and the only way to keep up with your competition. And Ryan Dungey completes the year with his fourth victory. When Ryan Dungey returned from his broken collarbone, he won the final two races of the Supercross season, and Davey Millsaps was able to finish a career best second in the series. Villapoto's trainer, Alden Baker, put him on a bicycle three days after his surgery, beginning an eight-month campaign to Supercross in 2013. No cell phones in the dojo. You know what dojo means? Yes. What does it mean, Jacob? Place of learning. Thank you, my son. Place of learning. Now let's learn how to get fit. Remember when he said, we do 100 push-ups, can we not go to the gym? And I said, bring it on. He did 99. <laughs> 99. And we went to the gym. <laughs> it was just a fond memory that I had. He hates to train. He doesn't get out there and say, you know what, I'm going to go ride my bike today. I'm going to come back, pump out some minutes on the rower, and then head to the track. He dreads it. You ain't got the shoulders for that. You can barely hold your arms up for this. And now you want to go like on Mayweather. What was that Irish guy that he used to challenge? You look like that guy. Hatton. Then he got onto alcohol or something. From 2000 to 2006, professional cyclist Alden Baker trained Ricky Carmichael to five Supercross championships. Incessant training has been the norm among Supercross riders ever since. 15 minutes. Are you for real? You just said 10. You don't listen. I'm gonna have to clear that, clear that wax out of your ears. Yeah, he did ruin the sport. Early 90s, they were racing and hanging out and having a good time all the time. I think they did train, but it's not to what it is now. Today, a Supercross rider must be able to maintain a heart rate, 93 to 95% of its capacity, for the entire 20 minutes of a race. Come on, focus! Numbers that resemble the cardiovascular capabilities of endurance cyclists requiring a training regiment capable of straining any relationship. You have short term memory. You can't count reps <laughs> when we're in the gym. Don't let me come and beat you up now. We can fight if you want. Oh, dude, I'll work you over so easily. If we didn't have these blowouts or fights, then somebody's doing something wrong because it's too easy then, I guess. Whether he hates it or he doesn't hate it, Ryan needs the discipline. Eldon has taken over for what his dad has done. Wouldn't care who if it's Ryan Villaput or not. Eldon's gonna come in there and do his job and is the best at what he does. It's changed Ryan's career. Yeah, it hasn't been that bad for you. I told you, you sit on the couch, do a little program work, come here, boss everybody around. Oh, Casey, start. Oh yeah, Ryan, 15. Go back home, tea and scrumpets, and back at it again, boys. That's right. That's why I'll be lining up at A1. Why not? I'll be lining up for you at A1. <laughs> and then when I fail, you're like, and then you'll be mad at me. That'll be an understatement. Although Ryan Villapoto is the most successful Supercross racer of his generation, his most dominant years were spent with strained relationships with his parents, brother, and sister. But things began to change throughout the process of rehabbing his latest injury and training for the 2013 Supercross season. It was pretty bad. I didn't talk to him for eight months a year and then would try and then you know things would get bad I wouldn't talk to him for a couple months and then try again I didn't talk to Ryan for three years when I was 13 to when I was 16 not one word I think the first birthday present I got from him was this necklace and I remember I got it and I just started bawling my eyes out because I was like oh my god he likes me <laughs> next summer I went to see him in Florida and I think that's when the rebuilding started to happen it was his way of reaching out to us in the summer of 2012 Villapoto increased his support of his younger brother Tyler's racing program and later that year invited his parents to live in his second home in Southern California, giving his father the opportunity to serve as Tyler's practice bike mechanic and participate in Ryan's daily racing routine. I'm proud that he's grown up to be the man he is. 
I didn't go to the practice tracks for about two and a half years. And now I started going to the practice tracks. Really got to see how focused he is on his training, and he's pretty good. He's real good. <laughs> this year, actually, when he got back from his knee surgery, the first day back was unreal. I swear, when he was hurt, he got faster. Yeah, we are the day before Anaheim won, and everything comes to this day. We're just going over our bases. Just a little bit of endurance, a little bit of speed stuff, starts. They are ready, and they know they've put in all the work. There's nothing more that we could have done. I expect to defend this title. We are in the best place we have ever been. I don't know how much lift you're going to get off that little thing and go double and then go where the guys are standing, go from there and then three into the turn. Injuries end most Supercross careers before the age of 30. And the monetary rewards of professional racing will seldom guarantee security after retirement. Facts that drive the search for safer, faster racing lines during a track walk, the pursuit of optimal suspension settings on their machines, and animosity towards other competitors. Maybe some boxing, I see, they truly have like, you know, some hate. And that's basically what it is here. We don't talk to each other. We all know our sport's short. It's not NASCAR. We don't have a cage. The more money you can make, the better you're off in the end. I want to leave it at two, softer, go out, ride it in the next practice, come back, go two stiffer, and then open it up. From 2009 to now, it's a huge difference in his attitude and how serious he takes the actual bike part of it. Go all the way back. I want to try that. Two out. Nobody knows but Ryan how hard he's hitting that jump or the actual feeling that's coming through his hands or his feet. If you're just watching with your eyes and guessing, it's impossible to win at this level. Atta boy, dude. You ripped, the, that you ripped the 55 out. Stu was 56 2. Like, I was going to tell him to slow down. He hit him so fast. Yeah. Well, if you watch practice, he was awesome. I think he's going to win. <laughs> That's my boy. 2013 will be Villapoto's first 450 class season with his family integrated into his life. But the satisfaction that fact brings has no place in the mind of a racer. We get hired for one reason, and that reason is to win. You almost become numb. How hard it was to get to where we are now injuries, we have to stay so fit. The day of the race, we have three different autograph signings and then three practices. Everything you deal with, everything you go through, you just become numb to certain things. Ryan's not some outgoing character that's gonna be in front of the camera, he's the best guy, says all the right things. That's probably never gonna be Ryan. Ryan's a racer and a champion. From Angel Stadium in Anaheim, the season opener! I did miss out on a lot during my childhood because Ryan was racing every weekend and people say all the time we hit the bad end of the deal but in my eyes I didn't because I got to see my brother do something that he loves and I got to see him be something great. Come on Ryan! Go, 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 go. Who's going to get the start? That looks like Kennard with a great one on the outside! Millsap grabs it! Oh, where you at, bud? Where you at? Finally, we see Villapoto. Villapoto is as far Still back as 12. And he's got a lot of work to do here. Here comes Villapoto on that green Kawasaki with the red number plate, sporting the number one. Oh, oh Villapoto no! off the track. Big mistake, it goes over the berm. All right, right smooth, buddy, right smooth. Come on. Villapoto now on the back of James Stewart. Villapoto alongside of Stewart. Oh! And he goes down again. Ryan Villapoto came to the first race at Anaheim, hoping to begin his campaign for a third straight Supercross championship, a feat that would put him among the top three riders in the history of the sport. Ryan started the race in 13th, slid off the track on lap four, and was battling for seventh with James Stewart on lap eight. Come on, Ryan, ride smooth, buddy, ride smooth. Come on! Villapoto now on the back of James Stewart, Villapoto alongside of Stewart, oh! and he goes down again! Oh! And he's limping! Both and Villapoto was limping as he got back to his bike. It's gonna be between these two for the win here! Here comes Kennard! He makes the move up the inside! 
Villapoto has more trouble. Man, this night is just gone from bad to worse for him. Make it tough to three Pete right now. Here's Millsaps! Oh, Canard goes sideways! Millsaps is in the lead! After his second crash, Ryan finished the race in 16th without his right glove and goggles. That was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that. Of the 57 450 Supercross class races Villapoto has started and completed, it was the second worst finish of his career. Got a whole year, dude. We've been in worse positions. Really, really frustrating to know what he has in the tank and what he is capable of and then to see such a mess. You're the reigning two-time Supercross champion. You need to focus on you. You should have dealt with him quickly. If this was like maybe five years ago, I probably would have been in there. What'd you do? What'd you do? He's hard on himself, so he doesn't need me to pour gas on the fire. On the good side is he finished. He got some points. Most guys that are riding around without one glove and goggles and everything else would quit. He looks unbelievable in practice, trailing the corners like no other. I'm like, how is he making it? Because he was going to pass. It's not over. He can come back from this. Villapoto left the opening round, 20 points behind race winner Davey Millsaps. In order to become the fourth rider in history to win three straight Supercross championships, he will have to close that gap in the upcoming rounds. The same night Ryan finished 16th, his younger brother Tyler did not qualify for the opening round of the Amsoil Arena Cross Series. Tyler is trying to revive his racing career after a four-year hiatus. You need to go around the corner faster. Instead of like slowing down, slamming it like that, that takes all your momentum away. On a daily basis, the Villapoto family will work together and share their evenings for the first time in two years. Is it worth it? Yeah, I think it's worth it. <laughs> well, just to be a part of it and, you know, everyone tells me, oh, you're living the dream. I must be living the dream. I am. I would never have thought I would race a motorcycle again in my life. If you were to tell me that a year and a half ago, I'd have literally probably got mad at you because you're saying things that I, I wish could happen. I really can't explain how excited I am that things are shaping up and looking positive for our family. The couple years where nobody was there, you could see there was a void. The Christmas thing, that's all he ever wanted was that scene. My prayers were answered. I used to pray for this every night. Like, just, I just want, like, a normal family, like, to be together, so. People have problems and struggles, so this is normal. Everybody knows that everybody's family is not perfect. Ryan Villapoto will labor for the coming years and likely will continue his ascent to Supercross greatness. But no matter the extent of his status as an icon, Happiness will only come from those who know Ryan for his humanity. I look forward to the day that he's not the racer. Yeah, I don't want to see him get hurt anymore. And he's just, you know, our kid.